One of the greatest football players of all time, Sir Bobby Charlton, has died. He was 86. Maybe a shot from Charlton. It's worth trying. During his long career, he captained Manchester United and won the 1966 World Cup with England. He later became a director at Manchester United and said football had been his life. I was fortunate enough to be good at the game. I found football was easy. I could never understand it when people couldn't play this game of football. And I've achieved almost everything that I set out to do. We'll look back at his remarkable career. Sir Bobby Charlton, widely considered one of the greatest footballers of all time, has died at the age of 86. He played for Manchester United for nearly all his career, took 106 caps for England and was a member of the England team that won the 1966 World Cup. Sir Bobby survived the Munich air disaster of 1958, which killed eight of his teammates. Tonight, Manchester United describes Sir Bobby as one of the greatest and most beloved players in the history of the club. Our sports correspondent, Joe Wilson, looks back at his life. Maybe a shot from Charlton. It's worth trying. You will know him by his goals. Charlton trying to get the shot, and it's on his right foot. Oh, 49 for England, 249 for Manchester United. Sir Bobby Charlton's record stood for decades, one legacy of a truly remarkable career. Born in Northumberland, Charlton was a schoolboy England international. In 1954, the pivotal decision, he joined Manchester United. And Charlton scores a beauty, they've equalised. In 1958, the Munich air crash left 23 people dead including eight United players. Charlton was on board. He suffered minor injuries. I'd like to say a few words to my mother. I hope she's OK yes. and taking it well. That experience shaped his life. It's unbelievable, really, that something like that should happen and all your pals get killed and suddenly you're, you're there with hardly a scratch on you. I just... Sometimes I feel it doesn't seem right, you know. United rebuilt their team with Charlton the foundation, the inspiration. Charlton headed it home. And in 1968, his goals against Benfica took United to the top, the European Cup. How they cheered as Bobby Charlton led his men up to receive the handsome outsized trophy. In a decade, from Munich to this moment. If that was the pinnacle of his club career, for England, there was more. There was 1966. His goals, including two in the semi-final against Portugal, were key to England's World Cup. And Charlton's reputation was secured. In 1970, Charlton made his 100th England appearance in typical style. Still, his career had to end. In 1973, he played his last game for Manchester United. He later became a director during the decades of success under Sir Alex Ferguson. That was just part of Charlton's later life. He helped charities and sporting projects, including London's Olympic bid. He received a knighthood and many other accolades. His relationship with brother Jack was often strained, but there was Jack to present Bobby with the BBC Lifetime Achievement Award. I was fortunate enough to be good at the game. I found football was easy. I could never understand it when people couldn't play this game of football. And I've achieved almost everything that I set out to do. But along the way, I had to do it with a lot of really, really good friends. The sentiments of a man known for his integrity just as much as his sporting ability. The man and the goals and the memories. They just Sir Bobby Charlton, who's died at the age of 86. A reminder before we leave you today that the England World Cup winner and Manchester United legend Sir Bobby Charlton has sadly passed away at the age of 86. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family and friends. Bye for now. Sir Bobby Charlton, World Cup hero and one of England's greatest ever footballers, has died.
His family say they were by his side when he passed away peacefully earlier today. Tonight, his beloved club, Manchester United, paid tribute, saying he was a hero to millions, not just in Manchester or the United Kingdom, but wherever football is played around the world. Sir Bobby, who was 86, survived the Munich plane crash that killed nearly all the Busby Babes team in the 1950s and was admired as much for his sportsmanship and integrity as for his genius with the football. Our sports editor, Steve Scott, looks back at his life. Charlton! It's there! Bobby Charlton! There was no one quite like Sir Bobby Charlton, a miner's son whose career touched the heights of glory and the darkest depths of tragedy. A football thoroughbred who could strike a ball so hard with either foot it was almost impossible to stop. What a goal! Without question, one of the greatest midfield goal scorers to have played the game. It says a lot that in the year he helped England win the World Cup, he won the Ballon d'Or, the prize awarded to the best player in the world. He scored twice in the semi-final win over Portugal. His dad missing the match because of a shift down the coal mine. Updates came from the surface about the most significant performance of his son's 106 caps for England. It was back in the alleys of Ashington in Northumberland where young Bobby first kicked a ball before catching the eye of Manchester United scouts. They made him one of their revered Busby babes, but their glory was cut horribly short by the Munich air crash which killed eight of his teammates. It would forever haunt Charlton. I, I don't understand why, why I, 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 was, I was okay, you know, and, uh, and they, were, they were killed. I, I never come to grips with it. I, I see quite a, a few of the relatives, you know, from time to time, and I, and I, I do feel a, a little bit guilty. That's perhaps why he later said it felt like it was his and manager Sir Matt Busby's duty to go on. And there, holding up the cup, is Bobby Charlton. Manchester United are the champions of Europe. This comeback is the story that won the club respect and admiration around the world. Manchester United became a global force. Charlton would dedicate much of the rest of his life to Old Trafford, ensuring the Busby Babes were always central to the club's identity. Like his older brother Jack, and an alarming number of footballers in later life, he suffered from dementia and his memories faded. But his brilliance at United as one of the Holy Trinity alongside George Best and Dennis Law will live on as long as there are football fans. Sir Bobby was a quiet, dignified man with the gift of dynamite in his feet. Well, our North of England reporter Kelly Foran is outside Old Trafford and uh, Kelly, tributes are continuing to pour in this evening. Yeah, and here at Old Trafford, there's been a steady stream of people arriving to pay their tributes, including, of course, the club themselves, who say that he was admired as much for his sportsmanship and integrity as he was for his outstanding qualities as a footballer. Sir Bobby will always be remembered as a giant of the game. His death means that Sir Jeff Hurst is now the only survivor of that 66 World Cup winning squad. In his tributes, he said, we will never forget him and nor will all of football, a great colleague and friend. He will be sorely missed by all of the country beyond sport alone. Now, Sir Bobby Cholton, born in the North East, he made his footballing legacy here in the North West. There's a stand named in his honour behind me here at Old Trafford. He stayed relevant in the game and around the world for decades. In English football, there has never been anyone quite like him. And as David Beckham has just summed up in his tribute, he's used words that I've heard a lot repeatedly over the last few hours, that Sir Bobby Cholton was truly a national hero.